The Universal Audio Apollo X audio interface has just received a serious upgrade. The Gen 2s are here. Hi, I'm Ed Thorne, a mixing and mastering engineer here in London. It's good to see you. The Gen 2s now host auto gain on all mic, line and high Z inputs. This feature is accessible in console UA's IO routing and mixing application, where you can also bypass the preamps on all Apollo devices. Previously, bypassing the preamps was only available on the rack mounted units. You guys complained, UA listened, and now it's available on the desktop devices too. The auto gain is accessible below the Unison preamp slots, and yes, it integrates with the Unison preamp modeling plugins. You can automatically gain stage your Neve 1073s, API channel strips, and guitar amplifier sims in 10 seconds. You can, of course, manually increase the input gain after the measurement for a more saturated sound and lower the output trim to compensate. To find out more about Unison preamps, check out this video here. Daisy chaining multiple interfaces together via Thunderbolt enables you to operate auto gain across multiple devices at the same time. For example, I have the X4 and the X8P links giving me 12 channels of auto gainable analog modeling unison preamps, ideal for recording drums. Universal Audio have upgraded the conversion on the entire range of Apollo audio interfaces. The Twin X Duo, the Quad and the X4 models have an extra 1, 2 or 3 decibels of dynamic range in places and a lower total harmonic distortion or noise floor reading across the board. Most noticeably on the headphone amplifier which is a huge and very audible improvement. In this chart, available to download for free from my website, link below, you can see how the new Gen 2 Apollos compare to other popular devices at a similar price point. The Apogee holds strong on the dynamic range, but the new Apollo Gen 2 THD readings are considerably better throughout the device. On the rack mounted X6, X8 and XP units, we're seeing a decibel more dynamic range throughout the device, and again in places a pretty serious overhaul in the noise floor readings. Here you can see a comparison against other similarly priced rack interfaces with the Gen 2s mostly coming out on top in terms of dynamic range, and considerably so on the THD readings. Overall, all the models in the range have been moved closer to the performance of Universal Audio's flagship interface at the X16, which remains the same. UA have achieved these improvements in dynamic range and up to five times lower THD by utilizing the top spec ESS Sabre D to A converter chips. This is a welcome and competitive upgrade. On the subject of THD, the huge reductions in the noise floor are clearly audible in the headphone amplifiers. And this is probably one of the most significant upgrades. I've compared the new X8P to my Topping DX7 Pro Plus DAC amp. Now for context, for those who don't know Topping products, the DX7 Pro Plus is one of the best measuring headphone amplifiers available. Now it is chi-fi, so it often gets dismissed unfairly but it measures as well as a 4,000 pound Lynx Helo 2 with one of the lowest distortion levels ever recorded on Audio Science Review. My point being, it's a killer amp and the headphone amp on the new Gen 2s gives it a run for its money. Now it's still got the Apollo low mid bloating and as a result, the transient response isn't as tight as the topping and the soundstage isn't quite as wide, but it is still a considerable upgrade in performance from the Gen 1s and very competitive with other interfaces at this price point. And most people are not gonna miss the difference in performance here between the Gen 2s and the topping, and you need to closely and quite critically A-B them to hear the difference anyway. For most people, the implementation of Sound ID for onboard headphone calibration will make up for any minor discrepancies between this and a designated headphone amp.
Yes, that's right, you heard that correctly. Universal Audio have teamed up with Sonarworks to integrate Sound ID Reference 5 into the Apollo system. Your room calibration measurements are taken as per usual in the Sound ID desktop application. Then that calibration profile is loaded onto your Apollo and stored on your Apollo, where it can be enabled, bypassed, and customized as usual. UA have implemented their own filters and EQ algorithms into this, utilizing two to three times more EQ bands of correction compared to most competitors, making this a noticeably more precise correction system than even the standard Sound ID software. Sound ID headphone calibration profiles can also be loaded into the new monitor correction section in console. As you would load a headphone calibration to the desktop or DAW plugin version of Sound ID, simply go to the search function, type in your brand of headphones, and load the relevant file. One headphone output can be calibrated on the desktop models, and two outputs can be calibrated on the rack units. At present, only one monitor output can be calibrated. You can't add a second calibration profile for the alt outs, but I've been led to believe this feature might be on the horizon. All the standard Sound ID features are included in the Apollo add-on, including the default flat target mode, Dolby Atmos target curve, custom target mode, and translation check mode, where you can emulate other speakers for quick mix translation checks. The main monitor and headphone corrections run simultaneously on a single Shark DSP core on your Apollo, offloading the workload from your computer in true UA DSP fashion. The X16 and X16 Dante can operate full 9.1.6 Atmos Sound ID calibration, all processed again on the Apollo. By facilitating this corrective processing on the Apollo, it means it is always occurring at the end of your signal chain, removing the need to use the Sound ID desktop system-wide application or the indoor plugin where it's all too easy to forget to bypass the plugin before printing a mix. This headphone and monitor correction update will be released towards the end of 2024 and will be available on both the Gen 2s and the original X model interfaces. It will not be compatible with the Apollo Solo, Solo USB, Mark II, and non X models. If you're an existing Sound ID reference customer, the Apollo monitor correction add on will cost $79. If you're purchasing Sound ID for the first time, the Apollo add on is $50. The Gen 2s now give you the ability to add a subwoofer to your setup with independent routing and processing control in console and the Sound ID add-on. The new base management feature caters for full range stereo and surround monitoring up to 9.1.6 Dolby Atmos surround sound processing on the X16 models. The new speaker utilities panel in console provides trim, mute and solo options per speaker output. Here you can also set the crossover points to your satellite speakers from your sub at 80, 100 or 120 Hz, using either a 12 or 24 decibel per octave link width Riley crossover with an optional plus 10 dB LFE output. The combination of UA bass management and Sound ID calibration means the monitor correction software will EQ and time align your subwoofer independently of your monitor speakers. And correction can be applied to all of your Dolby Atmos speakers. So, if you've listened to all that, is there anything missing? Is there anything that you wanted on these devices that UA haven't delivered on? Or is there anything that's particularly exciting you? Let me know in the comments, leave a comment below. I think the inclusion of an algorithmically advanced sound ID for headphone and speaker monitoring correction is awesome. Auto gain makes total sense with the already digitally integrated preamps. Bass management is a killer feature and a lot of people will find that useful and the lower THD levels is remarkable. I think UA have crammed everything you could ever possibly want into an audio interface. So I'm offering a free sample master on my website, edthorn.com. I'll place a link to that below. No obligations to buy. You can just hear my mastering for yourself on your music. I've been Ed Thorn. It's been emotional. Thanks for watching.